Genre, Expository Text, Survival at 40 Below, by Debbie S. Miller, illustrated by John Van Zyl. Essential Question, How are living things adapted to their environment? Read about how some animals are adapted to the Arctic environment. Along the Kayakuk River, towering mountains guard the magnificent valley. Their sheer faces watch the seasons change. Click, click, click. Snapping hooves and grumbling voices fill the autumn air. With heads held high, a herd of caribou follows the river through gates of the Arctic National Park. These regal deer wear new coats of dense fur, with velvet antlers curving toward the sky. Ready for winter, the caribou have gained a thick layer of fat from summer grazing on the tundra. Other Arctic animals scurry and prepare for the coming eight months of snow. Chickadees and gray jays cache seeds and morsels of carrion, hiding the food in cracks beneath tree bark. Red squirrels pluck spruce cones and hurl them to the ground. They will tear open the cones and eat the spruce seeds through the winter. A weasel snatches a brown lemming and carries it to an underground food cache. Gates of the Arctic National Park and Preserve. Barrow. Arctic Circle. Denali National Park. Fairbanks. Anchorage. Juneau. Nights grow colder. A thin layer of ice creeps across a pond near the river. Snug in their lodge, beavers rest after cutting many saplings for their underwater cache. Near their food pile, an Alaska blackfish paddles slowly through pond vegetation, searching for insect larvae. This bottom dweller can survive the winter in shallow frozen ponds with little oxygen. Along with gills, the blackfish has an unusual esophagus that can work like a lung absorbing oxygen from the air. During the winter, this fish will find holes in the ice and breathe through its mouth. Leaves rustle softly as a wood frog burrows into the duff of the forest floor. Suddenly, the frog feels its skin freezing. Its heart begins to beat rapidly. The frog's liver quickly produces lots of glucose. This sugary fluid, which the frog pumps through its body for several hours, will protect the insides of the cells from ice crystals. When more than three quarters of its body freezes, the frog stops breathing and its heart stops beating. But like magic, the frog is still alive. Beneath the insulating layers of duff and snow, this frozen amphibian will hibernate until spring. It's a live frogsicle. Farther up the valley, a small golden mammal is plump after a summer diet of tundra, plants, and seeds. As days grow shorter, the male arctic ground squirrel tunnels into the earth to prepare its burrow. He digs an underground chamber about the size of a basketball and stuffs it with grasses and tufts of caribou fur. Then he collects and stores seeds and berries. Sick, sick, sick. The squirrel chatters a warning signal. Across the river, a grizzly bear browses on berries and digs up thick potato-like roots with her sharp claws. Alarmed by this huge predator, the squirrel dashes beneath the tundra. Like the squirrel, this grizzly will soon dig her winter den on a mountain slope. As snowflakes swirl, the squirrel is ready to hibernate. He curls into a ball in his burrow, then slowly supercools his body, lowering his temperature to just below the freezing point of water. His heart rate gradually drops to three beats per minute, and his brain activity ceases. This ice-cold, furry squirrel looks dead, but amazingly, he is only in the inactive state of torpor. After three weeks, something triggers the squirrel to wake up. His heart rate increases. 
He warms his body by burning brown fat. This insulating fat protects his vital organs and acts like a heating pad. Within several hours, his heartbeat and temperature are normal. After rearranging his nest, the squirrel curls back into a ball and falls asleep. He dreams and sleeps soundly for about 12 hours. Then his body super cools again. Like a yo-yo, the squirrel warms himself, sleeps, and super cools about a dozen times during the winter to conserve enough energy to survive. Above the squirrel's burrow, an arctic fox searches for prey. The fox picks up the scent of voles beneath the snow. These mouse-like animals are huddling in their nest to keep warm. Like an acrobat, the fox springs high in the air and pounces on the voles. Breaking through the snow, he traps one by surprise. The arctic fox keeps warm in frigid temperatures because he wears two winter coats. His dense underfur insulates him like the down in a fluffy sleeping bag. His thick outer coat has tiny air pockets inside the hair shafts, instead of color pigment. The snow-white coat perfectly camouflages the fox for hunting prey and escaping predators. Fur also covers the soles of his paws, and his big, bushy tail provides extra warmth. Inch by inch, the layer of snow deepens with each winter storm. On a frigid January day, the temperature plummets to 40 below zero. Thick pond ice cracks and makes eerie sounds. The fluffy quilt of snow insulates and protects the many animals, plants, and insects beneath it. It is much warmer under the snow layer than in the open air. Other animals are well adapted to survive the colder air temperatures above the ice and snow. Snowshoe hares and ptarmigan zigzag between the willow bushes. Both animals can travel lightly across the snow with insulated feet that help spread out their weight. But the ptarmigan can't survive the lethal night temperatures and fly off at dusk to seek shelter. Puff they dive into a drift of powdery snow. Invisible to the world, the ptarmigan roost inside their snow burrows, protected from predators and the extreme cold. Another bird combats the deep freeze. A black-capped chickadee flits from tree to tree, eating his cached food. He must gain enough fat each day to survive the night. But this small bird needs more than food to survive. He fluffs up his dense feathers for better insulation. Tiny muscles control the angle of each feather, while other muscles shiver to produce heat. The chickadee can also lower his temperature and metabolism to save energy. He roosts in a thick forest or in tree cavities that give him the best shelter. While birds roost beneath a full moon, all is not quiet. A wolf howls on a distant ridge as caribou crunch through the snow with their broad hooves. These deer are well insulated for the Arctic by dense fur and hollow guard hairs. They sniff the snow and detect the smell of ashes from an old forest fire. Turning away, the caribou avoid this burned area. Muzzles to the ground, the caribou later detect the mushroom-like scent of lichens. They dig craters and forage on clumps of these rootless plants. Their hooves and thin legs are well adapted for digging. A special liquid fat protects their joints. Blood traveling directly to the hooves helps warm the returning blood to the heart. This circular flow protects the legs and reduces heat loss. While caribou wander, the grizzly bear is snug in her den with two newborn cubs. The drowsy bear nurses them and rests to save energy. The three survive off her large storehouse of fat. As she sleepily feeds her fast-growing cubs, she doesn't notice the faint sound of steps across the snow. Sure-footed and agile, dull sheep pick their way across the mountain slope. Fierce winds have blown snow off the alpine tundra, exposing frozen grasses and sedges. 
The sheep graze on these withered plants, then seek shelter from the wind by bedding down in the lee of some rocky crags. Month by month, winter passes slowly. Backs to the wind, a group of musk oxen stands on the snow-covered tundra, conserving energy. Short legs, small ears, and fluffy underwool, known as keviet, insulate musk oxen from even the deepest cold. One musk ox sees wolves approaching and senses danger. Immediately, the musk oxen gather together. Shoulder to shoulder, they form a circular wall of thick fur and horns. As one wolf draws near, a large bull lowers his deadly, sharp horns. With a sudden burst, he charges the wolf. Wheeling away, the wolf quickly retreats. The musk oxen continue to work as a team charging and driving off the hungry wolves. Trickle, tinkle, drip. The snow and ice begin to melt. As temperatures rise, bumblebees, butterflies, and other dormant insects begin to stir. A woolly bear caterpillar basks in the sun after being snow-covered for eight months. His dark, furry body traps the sun's heat. Inching his way to a budding willow, he chews on a tiny leaf. These fuzzy creatures and other northern insects have antifreeze substances that prevent ice crystals from forming in their bodies. The woolly bear will spend up to 14 winters in the Arctic as a caterpillar. Then this amazing survivor will transform into a moth, but for only one short summer. One by one, moist leaves rustle near the pond. The wood frog slowly thaws out and its heart beats once again. Ruck, ruck. The frog begins calling for a mate, making a duck like sound near the pond's edge. Slapping their tails in the open water, the beavers dive while the blackfish dart after prey on the pond's bottom. Farther up the valley, the male ground squirrel eats his stored cache of food then leaves his burrow in search of a mate. Hour by hour, day by day, the pulse of life increases with warmer June days and greening plants. Caribou feast upon a summer buffet, while playful grizzly bear cubs tussle and explore the tundra as their mother searches for prey. Birds that migrated south for the winter return to their birthplace building nests on the tundra and filling the air with music. For more than two months, the days will be endless as the top of the world tilts toward the sun and the magical land of the midnight sun explodes with light.